Hi, welcome to Founded Power Videos. This is DC here. In this and next few videos, I'll be showing you how to use the iCode SLIS ISO 15693 label. These are some of the, the high level features of uh, SLIS. So, this tag is uh, compatible with the SLI and also, you know, a little bit of uh, SLIX as well. Now, if you have been following all my previous videos and if you have watched my iCode SLIX2, so you will see that the password feature in this tag is very similar to the iCode SLIX2. It has got some special commands. Um, this is all taken from the data sheet. It said this special command for European regulations. I'm still not very sure how this probably in later part of my or my later videos will come to know what these are. And it has it, it has a feature called the EPC or electronic product code functionality. It is for this reason I have you know I'll be doing this video. So EPC code it's a very good area to work uh, probably you now for for the students and uh, software developers. It's it's uh, it's good to have a knowledge about the EPC. Now this tag stores the EPC code in a OTP memory. This is a one-time programmable memory. So it means once the EPC code is returned, it cannot be modified. So all the remaining features are very similar to the SLIX2. Say for example, it has got a, a password for read and write. It has a destroy feature with a password. It has a privacy mode with a password. EAS. Also, ES ID with a password, EPC destroy because EPC is a feature available in SLIS. So it has uh, the destroy EPC and the password, and the long range command. Again, uh, it's it's the first time I'm seeing this attacks. Probably in my future videos, you'll come to know what uh, how to access the EPC commands and the long range commands. So altogether, it has got two kilobits of memory. Again, all the information I got it from the data sheet. So this two kilobits of memory is organized as 64 blocks, and each four blocks is grouped as a page. So altogether, there are 16 pages in total. So you can think about the entire memory as consisting of uh, two areas: the configuration area. In fact, it occupies you know almost a third of the memory. It's a uh, 24 blocks. And this is the area where all the uh, configuration data like the UID or locks and EPC code and the passwords and uh, all the things you know are stored here. And you cannot access this part of the memory. You cannot do a read or a write block to this uh, this part of the memory. The remaining 40 blocks are available in the user area. This is where we keep our the user data. And there are 10 pages. In fact, 10 pages sometimes the page concept you know goes very well with the applications so in theory you can you can think that this uh, each of these tags can be used to store uh, 10 applications the way you identify this uh, tag is the uid the byte 6 of the uid which is the 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 number 5 is set to 0 2 and this supports 64 bit password the one thing what i would like to uh, mention in this video is if you have seen my videos on, on SL, SLIX2, I would say you have already covered 85% of this tag. So literally you don't have to, now, I, I'm, I'm not going to do uh, the videos that are, uh, the, which is already covered in SLIX2. So if you have not seen my videos, uh, please see the SLIX2 videos first. and the video in this series will be uh, to demonstrate and to make you understand all the commands that are that are not present in SLIX2 and which is present in SLIS. This is a, a kind of a comparison. I'm still not very sure which tag is the latest. Is it SLIS was the latest or SLIX? Because SLIX, as we have seen in my earlier videos, you know, it has a very, very comprehensive, it has so many features. And this is just like a, a, a high level comparison. So you identify the tag type as uh, 
the UID file set to 1, here UID file set to 2. And here you know that the privacy, the destroy password, the default password is all 0Fs, whereas here the destroy and privacy password is all set to 0. So, EPC is not present in uh, SLX2, where EPC is present here. Because EPC is uh, present here, there are new set of commands. In fact, the EPC commands are, are not defined in this uh, data sheet because EPC is a standard. So, you have to refer the EPC specification to know uh, the standard command. Just like you know, we did about the IS 15693 3 was the documentation uh, we refer to know all the, the IS 15693 commands supported by these tags. It's very, it's very similar concept. The one more difference here is uh, the get multiple block block command which is uh, part of the standard here there is a custom get multiple block command this will return the the various protection for each block so this is something we are going to see in my future videos so again the difference is the way you destroy the tag if you have seen my my videos on uh, uh, using destroy command in slx2 you know that there's a difference in the way you send this command. Again, you will, you will know more about this in my future videos. It has got inventory command, but a little bit some extra information to get here. Again, we don't have to worry at this stage because everything will be covered in detail in my future videos. It has got a long range command and it has got no get NXP system information. So, yeah, this is not there, but you know. You're not going to miss, I suppose, anything if it's not there. One more thing, which is uh, probably, which is going to affect the the type of reader device you use is the option flex one is not required for most commands. I'll tell you exactly now what this means. So this is the data sheet of uh, SLIX, SLIS, and if you look at, if you take any Say for example, the write command here, say, probably if you go here, SLIS2, if you see this uh, write AFI, lock AFI, so you can write the AFI with option 0 as well as option 1. You know, option 1, using option 1 to write, so requires the reader to send a EOF signal. So, I mentioned this in my my earlier videos and you know I've been using uh, the PN580 as well as OmniKey 5022. So you cannot do the option write one in OmniKey 5022 because uh, because you know writing using option one is a kind of a uh, going in detail about the the messages and signals. So I would say it's a kind of an advantage uh, by not having to use option one. There may be a few scenarios where you have to use option one. Probably now it's all or in the standard commands. So if you look at here, none of these uh, basic uh, write operations need option one. And this more or less matches with the I code SLI. And it's in you know, a if you st once you start uh, looking at my videos, I would advise you to uh, have a data sheet from internet, you know, and it's a very, very easy to understand document. So, I would advise you to read at least once and keep this as a reference. So, next I'm going to show you, you can still read and write to SLIS uh, tags using this existing version of the software. Again, this software is uh, not ready for SLIS specific commands. However, just to just you know make this in uh, the introduction video very attractive, I'm going to show that. So, this is the tag I got. Um, these tags somehow they're not easily available to buy from internet. So, you have to buy in hundreds or uh, again just have a a group of people you know by hundreds i'm going to put a url from where i bought this uh, these tags now these tags are available as a, as a label and uh, i came to know these slis are very popular among the library books and uh, for 
tracking the products. So I'm going to place it. I'm using this uh, Arduino and PN five hundred zero. I'm going to activate. You can see the software. You know, this is a very probably the software was written long ago. Probably it has decoded this uh, this uh, type zero two and to show the message SLIS. You can run more or less every command runs here, and you know, I can run this uh, get system command. I can read everything. So you can read it, probably can also write as well. So, so it works with the, okay, if you follow my earlier videos, you can still use SLIS attacks to read and write. So now you can see I've connected my OmniKey 502 to reader writer and the software is the, is still the software is not uh, modified to make SLIS uh, specific uh, command work. So, you can still use this software to do the basic read. So, I can activate. The only thing is software still recognize this as SLI tag. So, you, you don't see any features for password. But I can go and run all the commands. You can go and uh, read entire tag. But one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, you know in iCode SLIX2, there was a, a command to get the, the originality signature which can be used to verify the authenticity of the tag whereas you know in SLIS this that feature is not available. So I think that's all you know it's a very very uh, short video on uh, we just covered uh, what is SLIS and we also compared SLIS with the uh, SLIX2 and SLIS, SLI tags. In my next videos you will start uh, seeing the working of the commands that are that are present only in SLIS. Thanks for watching.